Hey everybody, it's Rod with Civil Advantage Firearms Training. I wanted to make a video to help you guys out there if you're struggling with answering this question, why do you need an AR-15? So I've had to answer this question myself several times in <laughs> different interviews and also in several conversations that I've had. It's a very risky question. It's probably one of the hardest questions to answer. It's a virtual minefield. If you don't come up with the right answer right away, it looks like you've lost your credibility. If you come up with the right answer, it'll spur some additional conversation and that's you know, as you guys know, I'm involved with the Canadian Coalition for Firearm Rights, and the idea of the organization is to create a conversation. And the reason why that is, and I just let me say this real quick before we get into answering the AR-15 question is, is if we can engage in this conversation, the rational, mature, fact-based approach will win the day. And when I say win the day, I'm not talking about winning everybody, but there's smart people out there in our society that are curious about this topic that have received a lot of bad information and they already have an opinion that's wrong. So we want to just present the facts and the data to show them, hey, listen, it's not my opinion. I want you to have the right information. And we've converted a lot of people to date. So back to the question. The question is super important. Why do you need an AR-15? Well, when people ask that, it's actually a variety of different questions with the why do you need an AR-15 wrapper. So the answer will depend on, and we're going to explore the different angles, but the answer will depend on how people are the angle in which they're coming at you with that question. So number one is the innocent question, which is I'm, I'm purely curious. Why do you need an AR-15 as opposed to many other rifles that are available on the market? That question, just be honest. You can just be honest in all these answers. The honest truth is the AR-15 is awesome. That's why. It's one of the most ubiquitous rifles on earth. One of the most popular rifles in human history. I'm a huge fan of AR-15s for all of these reasons. Among them, it was made in the, in the, in the late 50s, was adopted by the U.S. Army then, and it was, a, uh, it was a revolution in firearms. It was lightweight. It was reliable. Not so much in those days, but it got there, right? It shot a high-pressure small bullet. Therefore, there was very little recoil, and it was still effective on targets about the size of human beings, right? So when you're using them for hunting, that's great. It's great for, for medium-sized game like wolves and coyotes, right? You know, um, problem animals, uh, wild boar. Those types of animals, perfect for AR-15s for hunting. Um, it was used in, for, to great effect in the military because people could pack it around. It was lightweight. Uh, and being one of the most ubiquitous rifles in human history, meaning they're just everywhere, you can, the, the parts availability and the upgrade availability is infinite, and that's why people are so into their ARs. It's like a Lego gun. You can just buy these different kits, and the thing just takes a, a completely different shape. A lot of people build their own ARs. They've got them with short barrels and long barrels. They've got an old classic M16 looking thing. They take it to the range. It's like, yeah, just like the Vietnam era. You know, they've got the brand new kind of long forend stretched out, you know, stance, you know, this uh, uh, gunfighter, modern gunfighter style. Uh, you've got sport ARs. You've got very high end ARs. You can pay $4,000 for an AR-15 or you can pay 750 bucks. They're just, there's so many out there and you can mix and match all kinds of stuff. Um, it's truly like customizing a car for people. And the fact that it's side eject even from the 50s so you can mount your optics, you know, anywhere on the gun you want, like there's a million different reasons. They're great for children, uh, meaning, you know, you got adolescents, they're still their small stature, but still you don't want to give them a gun that's going to push them over because that's no fun. An AR-15, really loud, you get a nice flash off the muzzle depending on the, on the barrel length. And so the kids love it, and it's not, it's not a dangerous fire that, firearm for them to actually operate. For women, it's perfect. Women can handle AR-15s. You know, you can shoot an AR-15 with one hand, you know? So they're just a fantastic all-around firearm. That's why they're popular. That's why an AR-15. So you can condense that answer if you want to a few basic uh, elements, but I've given you enough information there that if you kind of go through that and you have that in your pocket, at least you'll be able to, just, you'll be able to articulate why AR-15s are so popular and why people don't want to give them up. Uh, the, the next why do you need an AR is, is this, is it could, because it's a killing machine, that's the angle. Why do you need an AR-15 specifically because it's been used in some high profile shootings? Well, for one, the AR-15 hasn't been used in a ton of shootings. It has been used a few times, but by no means is it the leading cause of firearms related death in the United States or in Canada. Handguns are, but nonetheless, that's okay. We'll still answer the question. So wrapped in that question is, why do you need semi-autos? I think semi-autos should be banned. Okay, so there's a, there's a few things we're going to work with, and here's your argument there. Uh, number one, um, an AR-15 or any semi-automatic firearm, the reason why you have it is because it's the modern evolution of a firearm. We have semi-autos now. 
Now we don't have to pump the action on a, on a pump action. Now we don't have to run the lever on a lever action. Now we don't have to run the bolt on a bolt action. It's a semi-auto. Semi-autos are great for hunting. Okay, so sometimes people, you got to be careful of this, sometimes they'll want to paint you into a corner with this whole hunting thing. Like that's the only legitimate reason to have a firearm. And of course, that's ludicrous <laughs> because firearms are used around the world every day to protect life, to save lives, right? But people ignore that. Uh, firearms protect and save infinitely more lives than they take. That's a fact that's borne out by evidence. It's not an opinion, right? So that's definitely worth mentioning. When it comes to semi-autos in general, you want an effective firearm for whatever it is you're doing. If you're sports shooting, you need a semi-auto. You don't sports shoot you know, with a bolt action. You know, you long range shoot, but it's a completely different sport. You need a semi-auto for hunting certain animals. If you strike an animal, like a wild boar with a, with a, a 223 or a 5.56 NATO, which is typical for an AR-15, what if the animal doesn't die right away? You want to shoot it again so it doesn't suffer. You know, hunting is not all about making animals suffer. So you may it may take you forever to line up another shot with your bolt action. All right, so great, ARs are great for that. But ARs are also used for protection of life. You need a semi-automatic if your opponent has a semi-automatic. It only makes sense. So a lot of people have, have, have had their lives saved by AR-15s. There was, there's been multiple stories in the United States, which it's a little more common for people to defend themselves with firearms, where children that had shooting experience were home during a home invasion and were able to save them and their siblings because they had an AR-15. I know it's very hard for some people to understand, but there's a basic human right, and that's the right to defend your life should someone try to kill you, rape you, assault you, or even take your things. Right? So, I, I, you know, we, we, sometimes people get detached from that basic human right, but you have a right to do that. And if a tool helps you do that more effectively, or makes the difference, equalizes the engagement, I can't see how that's a bad thing. So when it comes to why do you need, you know, I think semi-auto should be banned, why do you need one to begin with? And that's the idea of dangerous things. So here's another tool in your toolbox here. Dangerous things. Why should people have semi-autos? That semi-auto could be stolen. That semi-auto could be misused. You know, we want to just get rid of them all. So there's a couple of different ways to look at that. One is, in our society, we don't have to justify to the bureaucracy. We don't have to justify to the government or justify to our fellow citizen why we need something or why we want it. That's just not the way our society works. If you want to live in a society like that, there's a lot of societies like North Korea where you have to come with your hat in hand and take a knee and ask to have something. We have a free country, people have fought and died for our way of life, and to me, it's unacceptable for us to do that. So if you look at the way that we look at firearms and that you know, justification, and the way that we look at everything else in our, in, our, in our society, it's completely different. It has to be the same, or you become something that we call a hypocrite, right? So why does anybody need to jump out of an airplane? If they're not in the military, jumping out on some foreign battlefield. You know, I don't want to, I don't skydive, I've never been skydiving, so why should we even allow that? But we don't say that. We go, well, there's some risk associated with that, but if somebody wants to do it, they can go ahead. They're not hurting anybody else. And if it, that happens, probably just a remote accident. Why does anybody need a vehicle that has 750 horsepower driving around on the streets with my daughter when she's driving around in her little convertible? That's ridiculous. I won't, I can't accept that whatsoever. No, we say, you no, there's no limit to, you know, uh, how much horsepower you can have in your vehicle. Just don't speed because there's, there's regulations to that. Right now, it's still illegal to murder people with a firearm or any other way as well, right? Um, you know, the, 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 the horsepower thing in a vehicle is quite interesting. I have a friend who's got an SUV, 750 horsepower, right? He doesn't belong to a, a, a racing club or a track. He's driving around on the street with that car. You know, give that some thought. How many families, entire families, have been extinguished by people driving at excessive speed and getting into an accident and killing everybody? I would wonder how many people w are killed within, in excessive speed motor vehicle accidents as opposed to um, having uh, um, murdered with firearms. Hmm? It's an interesting question. I'm not an expert in these matters, but it's something to consider. Another thing to consider. Uh, in the way that we look at firearms and how it's different than we look at any other aspect of our society. People die all the time in our society. I'll give you an example. CBC reported a number of years ago, I haven't heard anything since, but reported a number of years ago that 24,000 people a year, on average, die in Canada alone from medical mistakes. 
So you get 24,000 people. Let's say it's 20,000, just to, just to be conservative. Let's say 20,000 people a year in Canada go to the doctor or go to the hospital looking for help and they're killed for their efforts. Right? Do we say, oh my God, look at that number, it's ridiculous. We can't, I, well, I can't justify having a medical system if it's going to kill me. Of course not, because we're reasonable. We're saying, look at how many people are helped. Look at how many people are just, you know, it's an innocuous relationship with the, with the medical system. And then we look at how many people are, are actually being killed by it. And we say, well, seems like there's a lot, there's not really a threat when you look at the numbers. You look at this, these ratios and the relationship between the numbers. We're rational in those instances. We're rational when we look at motor vehicles. We say there's an inherent risk for me to drive around in my society and I'll be killed by, a, by somebody speeding in a car that is just too fast. But we don't do anything about that because we say, look at all the people using cars and look at all the people really doing these offensive things and hurting other people. It's a small number compared to the greater, the greater good. And we use cars for a number of different things. If we take that same ideology, that same rational mode of thought, and we place it on firearms, I will tell you what the conclusion is, and the facts bear that out, firearms are not a problem in our country, which is Canada. They're not a problem. So that's a, a couple of different ways that you can approach these things. Um, one thing I would also do is, is, is set expectations when you're talking to people. Just say, do you really want to know why I need an AR-15? Because if you really want to know, I'll tell you. But it's, gonna, it's, not, it's, not, two, it's not a two-sentence two answer. It's not an answer I can give you in like a minute and a half that's going to satisfy you. So if you're, if you're prepared for the answer and you're willing to go with me intellectually and understand that, then we can have that conversation and I'll tell you exactly why I need an AR-15. So hopefully there's some good stuff in this video for you. You've got a bunch of different tools in your tool belt now to pull out. Um, if you guys have other arguments that you think are valid, please put them in the comments below. I hope this helps and I hope that helps uh, spur conversation because conversation is our biggest weapon, right? Saying, you know, this cold dead hands, you'll never take my guns, you know, that's not helping. We've tried that for two decades, more than two decades, it hasn't worked. So anyway, engage in conversation, talk to people, stay calm, appeal to their rational side. Will you win everyone? No, you will not. You will, you will never be able to convince everyone. There's people that are so self-absorbed, they can't hear you speak unless you're telling them something out they want to hear. We're not going to get those people regardless. But there are people out there, as I mentioned, that are smart and rational and reasonable, but they've just been fed some bad information. So every time we run into somebody like that, there's an opportunity for you to make a difference. So stay calm, stay friendly. You're just exploring this idea with people. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take care. We'll see you soon.